Greetings. Welcome to a new episode of Art Matters. I'm your host, Wayne Quackerbush, and we'll be talking to a couple of uh, Rhode Island artists today. First up is uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Box. That's her real name, <laughs> as we just discussed. I met you through Instagram of all places. You did some paintings of uh, locations in Newport, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and people pointed out that to me, and I contacted you, and, and then here, here we are. Here like, we are. Like two weeks later. I know. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I don't think that's ever happened before, where I meet somebody, and then you're on the show within two weeks. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And if you want to start by talking about your journey into your art and, and how you got to where you are? Sure. I mean, I think um, a lot of people may have a similar story. I painted a lot. Well, I made a lot of different kinds of art in my late teens and uh, early 20s. Very angsty, mm -hmm. very dark. You know, my parents worried, worried about me a little bit. Um, but then I just kind of stopped and life happened. Um, and then for almost two decades, I really didn't do much. And then I just, you know, picked up my brush, if that's what picked, yeah, up my brush, and I started. Um, and so for the past five, six years, I've been rediscovering myself as an artist. So I don't really have any formal training, um, but I have definitely benefited from different people and classes and mentors along my journey. Yeah, you don't have to take um, regular classes in order to learn. Obviously, you get you have a life experience and you have a, a drive and a sense of color, as we'll see, <laughs> and uh, a sense of design and anatomy, and you just go to it. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing how that can happen. And it seems like you have a new sense of freedom. You're able to express yourself in ways where you were maybe hindered before. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, painting, it's self-discovery as much as it is like looking at the outer world. So every time I paint something, I, I learn something about how I see the world. And yeah, it is freeing. Um, and I think that's probably my biggest challenge as an artist is when I get locked up, mm -hmm. you know, and I sit there and I'm like, and I've, I've talked to other artists about that. And I'm like, what do you do? Like, you know, because it's like suddenly the freeness is all like, Ugh, and you're looking at like a painting to produce. So I got some really good advice recently, which is walk away. You're painting in oils, just walk away, leave it alone, and come back. Don't try to force it. So I'm, try I'm trying. I'm well, trying I've had that. various uh, discussions that were similar, and there's nothing more daunting. I mean, I know writers, and I know painters, and there's nothing more daunting than that white space, that yeah. void that you have to fill, and you have to figure out what to do with it. Um, back in the day, I had a, a teacher who said, never go anywhere without a notebook and a pencil, because mm -hmm. Your ideas are going to be coming fast, and they're going to be fleeting, and they're yeah. going to go away if you don't get them down. So I think it's important to kind of keep a record of where you want to go. And <clears throat> being exposed to other artists, and we were just talking about traveling through art history and seeing what other people have done and picking up on that. And we have a real advantage in the 21st century of being able to access images from wh where are we at like 45,000 years now well, didn't yeah, yeah. they find just weren't there just caves discovered in uh, Asia that had paintings that from that long ago yeah. didn't know that. <laughs> it's new yeah and and it's it's all based on the the limitations of being human um, you know having to wander around in these bodies with limbs and a head and, and kind of <laughs> make sense of the world. Um, be happy to start showing your work. Sure. Um, I know you're inspired by, by people and personalities and, and, well, I should let you talk more. <laughs> no, it's good. I like to hear what other people say. Um, yeah, so I think, so here's um, a piece that I just recently finished. Um, I think uh, most predominantly I paint people. Um, and so I, um, I just think people are super interesting. I, I find, though, that what I'm most, when I'm 
I, um, when I'm painting my best or creating my best, I have some sort of relationship or connection to it. There's something here, um, and I don't always understand it, right? Um, but um, typically, I like to paint from uh, you know, a pose or setting folks up and talking to them and getting an idea of, of what they're like. Um, the pandemic made that a little challenging, but what it did do was allow for, so I've never physically met Jeffrey, but we know each other on social media. Wow, and so, okay, because um, I, I would have thought that you had sat, he had sat for you because it's so lively. Yeah, this is actually from a photograph. So I've painted um, folks from England who mm -hmm. I've said, hey, you know, we, we know each other on social media. Sure. Um, can I paint your portrait? Yes. So, um, so I love painting big because it just has that feeling of, I don't know, impact. And I love color, as you mentioned. So mm -hmm. if there's a tube of paint that's a color, I'll take it right from the tube. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be all like mixing stuff. I'm like, nope, I love that turquoise and I, I love that, you know, dioxazine purple, if that's how you say it. Yep. Um, so that's that's kind of my favorite, and I also love to paint people in a in a setting. So it's like you know what's around them, um, and I hesitated because I don't usually paint dogs, but the dog is the story here. That's you know part of the joy and the the laughter. Um, so um, he loves the painting, thankfully, and. Uh, well, everything about the painting expresses some kind of joy. Mm -hmm. uh, the pose, the fact that he's open, his body is open, mm -hmm. and his mouth is open like he's laughing, and uh, the dog it looks very precarious. Uh, <laughs> there's lots of movement. There's that rug m movement in, against the floor and the curves of the couch. and. It's, it's almost like you're painting some kind of royalty, you know, like back yeah. in the day you'd paint the king and right. everything that showed his uh, symbols of office. Yeah. So the, the paintings in the background all have a different story to tell and even the sunglasses uh, because he's in the house. Why is he wearing sunglasses? Because he's kind of wacky. <laughs> he's a super... Um, amazing fashion sense too. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and it's interesting you say that whole idea of, of like painting the king. I've been toying a lot recently with this idea of being regal, right? And so I like to paint women and often women <coughs> together. Mm -hmm. And that idea of sort of the regality of, of the pose is, uh, I don't know, I, I feel like there's an essence of that. Um, across a lot of my pieces. Sure, it's, it's all in the pose and the accoutrement. Do you want to see some other? Absolutely. Awesome, so um, I do printmaking. One of the things I love to do most, more than anything is um, monoprints. So um, usually I'll, I'll paint something and then I feel like I'm not really finished with it. So with the image or exploring the image, so what I do is I pay, take a piece of glass or plastic mm -hmm. right over the piece of art, and then I paint with linseed oil instead of um, uh, like a turpentine to, to make it spreadable. Um, yep. And then I put a single you know, piece of paper down and pull it up. And the thing that is really freeing about these is that you don't know what you're going to get. Right. You're painting in reverse. You're painting with a texture that you can't really see, like how it's going to, if it's going to be transparent, if it's going to be super, you know, solid. And then you get these fantastic little, like, blobs where you put too much paint on and you mm -hmm. get a little. So I love doing these, um, and they're relatively quick, too, so it gives me a, something that's fast and... Yeah, you don't have to be quick, but if you put the colors down, um, they'll be liquid for yeah. as long as you want with linseed oil. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so um, I also do some black prints, um, which yeah. again are sort of um, images that I see are dry paint that I then want to turn into something a little more stylized. Um, Is that uh, uh, linoleum? So I have to confess. Yes. 
I use um, that new Easy. Yes. Yeah. We've had artists on before, and it's so uh, apparently it's so much easier than using a linoleum. The downside is it falls apart faster. Oh, really? So, um, yeah. Does that mean you can't make as many strikes? You can. You just have to take very good care of them. Hmm. Um, and so, um, after doing quite a number of these, I also um, have. And I don't know if I'm going to continue to do this, but this is actually a combination of all three of those styles. Yeah, you'll have to explain. So this is but a you painting. Have to kind of keep it so that he's it's parallel. Is yeah. that good? Okay. So originally I did a painting of um, a model named Aaliyah, mm -hmm. um, and loved that image. Still have that image, and then um, wasn't done with it clearly. So I did a monoprint of it. Um, which was not really very successful. Um, but again, that idea of being a queen, that regality, if you can see the figure in there. Mm -hmm. What I ended up doing is taking a lot of my other prints and then um, assembling them into a collage or whatever you want to call it, a multimedia piece. Um, and so you can see images within images. You can see um, a lot of my prints are of women's bodies. So you can see elements of women's bodies within. Well, you were within. talking about being inspired by a recent Alice, Alice Neal uh, exhibition you went to, and that would definitely remind me of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're using the, the prints for most of the shade? Uh, did you put the... Uh, These are all prints. So the okay. entire surface is covered in some sort of print. Oh, okay. Um, and you can tell some of the pieces are, you know. Yeah, you can recognize forms from other um, pieces that you... Right. Disrupted. Yeah. And as you can tell, again, the theme of color, like give me hot pink any day, mm -hmm. um, a turquoise. I love playing with all those different colors. Well, you are working with complementaries, and so everything pops. That green against the pink and the purple against the yellowish uh, ochre. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's very striking, definitely eye-catching. Yeah. I, where I work, um, I run a nonprofit, and so... I'm able to hang the art on the walls of my office. Um, yeah, I so. can identify with that. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my staff members loved this image, and she says it kind of she can get a little lost in it because of all the, the don't layers you, don't and textures. You don't, uh, with my OCD, I would say I would want to seal it, like because everything's like kind of lifting up. Do you does that? Um, do you like that or? I like it. I think I'm probably going to need to do that a little bit of better job because I don't want it to fall. To fall off, hmm. but it has that feeling of the uh, the pop-up cards. Yeah, it's for, uh, very sculptural. Yeah, so you have one more because we're getting kind of close. To yeah, the time. last but not least, um, I do love painting Newport. So um, that includes both, you know, all the beautiful places in Newport, but also some of the landmarks of Newport that aren't typically known as landmarks. So no, that's. Uh, so I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, Satuous Point, right? Yeah, yeah. so Satuous is one of my um, go-to places in the world, mm -hmm. one of the most beautiful places, I think. Um, and so I was able to paint this outside. Um, so you did it plein air then? Plein air, yeah. Okay. And yeah. you're not afraid to just apply the color, because uh, I know a lot of people get uh, fidgety and they have to mix it to make it perfect. But the fact that you're, you're so raw Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're you're just so excited to get the paint on the canvas. Yep, <laughs> exactly. And I'll use my fingers, and I'll yeah, use a absolutely. palette knife too. Yep, yep. Now we're getting close to the end, and I want to take a minute to thank you for coming by, taking some time out of your day, and coming to talk with us. Absolutely, this has been a lot of fun. Okay, great. Cool. Okay, we have our next artist up on deck, uh, and. I'd like to introduce everybody to Natasha Cologne. I uh, met her several years ago uh, when she showed me some of her artwork and she's been very active recently uh, with her own Instagram page and she's been working diligently with an organization called uh, Downtown Designs, right? Yes. And do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what got you interested in art? and? and how you started painting? What got me interested in painting um, is in the very be beginning when I was 21, I was inspired by 
this um, woman when I first went to Looking Upwards mm -hmm. in 2011. Um, the woman who um, a very who uh, who was a very kind woman, she's no longer with us. Mm -hmm. um, she saw a potential in uh, me, and she opened up her world um, of her um, art to, to me. And she was she. You told me recently that you said that she saw potential in you. Yes. So what kind of artwork were you making when you started? And, and this now 10 year journey? I started painting like dragons and warriors and fantasy creatures. Were you inspired by um, Dungeons and Dragons or? I was inspired by like dragon movies like How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, okay, all right. Now I get you. And, uh, You've also done a number of individual comic book stories, right? Yes. And what kind of stories were you telling with those? I was doing like a horror one with my two friends, Nina and Angela, mm -hmm. um, who were two wonderful people. Um, and the comic book was actually pretty funny and scary. Mm -hmm. It was it was um them in like a horror house and running around from like zombies to like baby creepy horror dolls. <laughs> Did you play any horror video games? Um nope. Okay, so you you like movies a lot though, right? Yes, horror movies. Yes, I I know. Now, um we can take a second because uh, Downtown Design is a nonprofit organization and we can say that it's in Newport. Yes. And it's uh, at almost the very bottom of Broadway. Uh, and uh, it uh, has people in there. You go there a few times a week and make artwork, right? Yes. Now, do you want to start showing us some of your paintings? And if, since you started talking about movies and and uh, TV and horror movies, maybe you could show us the big uh, Walking Dead piece that you have there. You have to hold it like that right on the table, straight up, and it has to be pointing at the camera. Yeah, that looks good. Now, those, those are all of the... Uh, Walking Dead cast. Yes. Now, I recognize a lot of them, and uh, that's back when some of the cast was uh, still alive. Yes, yes. Um, I think this was um, painted from like season seven. Okay, now and you watched all the episodes of Walking Dead? Yes, it's, um, they took it off the air because um, cause of the fall and Christmas. Oh, um, right, yeah, the last season is on now, right? Yeah, yep. and uh -huh. it's coming back in February. Mm -hmm of 2022 yep. and the characters that I've painted here are Rick and all of his um his um group yep I started liking the Walking Dead in 2013 that's when it started right yeah actually I think it started in 2010 when I was 20 oh okay so just before you started painting yeah but. and I started falling in, in, in love with The Walking Dead. Right. And um, I loved the, the characters and the, the hideous, scary walkers. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, um, The Walking Dead is basically about Rick and a whole bunch of people trying to sur survive and, uh, of um, the zombie apocalypse. Apocalypse. Uh, yep. Apocalypse. <laughs> and uh, and they're basically they form various families and they they are all trying to help each other yeah. until they run into people who don't like them and yeah. then it turns out that the 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 people who are who they run into are worse than the than the than the zombies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite ca characters would have to be um, Beth Green. Um, who died in like season I think five, mm -hmm. and um, I almost cried when when Beth um, died because she was like one of my favorite 
characters. Well, it's very emotional. Yeah. Now, if you want to put that down, and we can start a little time travel here, because uh, we want to talk about this one first. Uh, oh. What's her name again? Her name is Rainbow Face. And is this one of your first paintings? Um, this painting wasn't my first one. Um, I think this was done in 2015. Mm -hmm. And I had done this painting um, because I fell in love with the colors. Yeah. Now, are you using acrylic paint? Or is this, this looks like it might be poster paint even. Is it acrylic? I think it's acrylic. Mm. And then <coughs> moving forward to the present, you just started a new series, right? And, yes. And um, TV and movie actresses, is that where you're going? So you can yes. start showing us that. This is Dolly Parton. Oh, excellent. Um, she's um, loaded with money. She is loaded with money, but she's also very kind. Yes. In fact, I don't think anybody, there's anybody that doesn't like Dolly Parton. Everybody loves Dolly Parton. Yes. Um, she, um, she's a very kind, kind woman. Um, I also heard that she donated like a lot of money to come up with the vaccines for the COVID. Mm-hmm. Yep. She yep. did. And then you can put that down and start showing us uh, your other ones. Now I recognize that, but I don't know if a lot of younger people would recognize who that is. This is I Love Lucy. Yeah, Lucille Ball. Um, I, um, I was very, very young when Lucy O'Ball started to come out on TV. Uh -huh. And um, she's, she was very famous. She had her own production company. Oh. And uh, she and her husband ran um, Lorimar. And coincidentally, they're the people that brought a Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lucy was pretty pretty uh, amazing and um, obviously you recognize that she has red hair yes. because in the black and white show <laughs> you can't tell very good and who's up next um, up next I have Sheer Cher mm-hmm and I painted Sheer is because I love one of her um, songs, which is the sun ain't gonna shine anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, she is very famous. Yes, absolutely. Now, how, did you ever see Cher in the movies? I saw Cher in one movie by Christina Aguilera. Oh, which movie was that? I don't quite re remember. Okay. She's had quite a long career. She's, uh, she's been active since the 60s. And yeah. she had her own TV show. Did you know that? I had no idea. With yeah. Farrah Fawcett? No, no. It was a, um, a variety show. She had it with her then husband, Sonny. You know Sonny? Did you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, they had uh, various singing and comedy acts on and she always wore very very elegant she was always elegant in her gowns yep yeah. and now we're going to go into more of your movie stuff because you said you liked horror movies mm -hmm. and who's that this is friday the 13th with jason Voorhees. <laughs> now do those movies scare you um I started, I, I have, I was like so afraid of everything horror when I was like a teen. And then when I was 23, my best friend Stephanie Carl said, do not be afraid of a Halloween because Halloween can't scare you. Right. And ever since she told me that, I have never been afraid of Halloween again. And because the monsters aren't real, they're just pretend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what inspired me to paint Jason is because I got chased by Jason when I was nine. 
in a haunted house. Oh, really? Yeah. Did that scare you when you were nine? Yes. You always remembered it, and mm -hmm. now you have your revenge <laughs> and by doing a painting of Jason. Yep. Now let's keep moving because we're getting we're running out of time. We're gonna another another movie influenced. This is. Keep it straight. That's Kill Bill. This is Kill Bill. Mm -hmm. One of my other horror paint uh, movies that I actually like. Um, this movie is actually a gory movie. It sure is. And what I like about it is that it takes place in Tokyo, J Japan. Yes. And um, it's from Quentin Tarantino. And the woman that was in this movie was Uma Thurman. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think a lot of people have heard of Uma Thurman. Oh yes, she's pretty. She's been in lots of movies. Yeah. Um, going back uh, thirty years now, at least. But uh, Kill Bill was in two parts, and she was in both parts. Yeah. Yep. And she had to fight. Uh, uh, she, she's uh, martial arts experts in Japan. I remember that. Yes. And you made sure there was plenty of blood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do we have next? Um. We have Evil Dead and Rosemary's Baby. Oh, that's a combination. Evil Dead, um, I heard that it's very scary. My mom watched it when she was very young, and she said she got nightmares uh, about it. That's understandable. And Rosemary's Baby, I've never seen, but I heard that it's quite scary. Now, you haven't seen Evil Dead either? I saw like the the newer one. Oh yeah. But I haven't seen the twenty the the one that was made like in the nineteen eighties. Yeah, that one's much better. The new one's kind of just sad. Yeah. Yeah, and they're kind of depressing actually. Yeah. But we're gonna go to some lighter subject because you're a big fan of. Uh, uh, well, you'll see. Who is that? That's Queen Elizabeth. Okay. Maybe uh, move the move it so that this way so that the camera can see it better keep it on the table yep. um queen elizabeth um what inspired me to paint her is i like the history and going back in time to like the 18th and 19th and 17th century mm -hmm. and um i did um um her is um because i think that she's beautiful and um well, you like her hair and jewelry too, right? Yes. Yeah, very much so. Mm hmm Okay, I think we have one more. And this is a very special one because it's uh, about uh, being vegan. Yes, and I am a vegan. Mm -hmm. I've been a vegan since 2019. And what inspired me to be a vegan is... Um, when I watched the documentary, What the Health, it changed my whole way of eating. And I did this painting is because um, a lot of um, people like don't, don't know what really goes on behind what you're actually eating. Right. And like every time you eat like a piece of meat or like a piece of cheese, um, these animals like, like suffer so that we can enjoy their products. Right. Okay, so Natasha, we're kind of out of time. I really wanted to thank you uh, for coming by today and taking the time to talk with us. And thanks again, everybody, for showing up for another episode of Art Matters. We'll see you next time. Thank you.